Hello random people on the internet, my name is Banana and I'm back with some more Skyblock news and uh, in this video we're going to talk about the new update that just released. We did know pretty much all of this stuff but I do want to give you guys a quick refresher on what is going on with this new community project update and there's also a couple new updates coming to the Crystal Hollows that were announced yesterday and I'm going to talk about both of those. But before we get to that, I just want to remind you we're coming in on 50k so if it helps you out at all, if this video video is any bit helpful the best way to support the channel would be to subscribe it's free you can undo it later and it's really epic of you if you do so so I would really appreciate that but let's get right into all of the new stuff so the community project is finally over it is finally set up over here and uh, we got a couple new things to look at for one there is Rosetta she gives starter gear out to people and uh, each of these sets is more expensive than the last, but they are at least a little bit like good in comparison to some of the old early game stuff. Like this mercenary armor set is particularly nice because this thing is basically giving you free coins if you have the opportunity to wear this one while you're killing mobs and actually being able to kill them still. This is probably going to actually be meta if you're grinding coins via mobs. Most of the sets aren't that great, but like this one gives some uh, some mana. You also get a starlight wand and that has a pretty cool attack. But these are just some simple starter armor sets for the more early game players and hopefully this is going to help them progress into combat a little bit faster. None of them are that great, but they exist, so uh, that's pretty pog. The main chunk of the update comes down here when you're talking to Jax. Jax is basically a new NPC that is going to, uh, he's going to sell you different kinds of arrows and there's a lot of different kinds of arrows and the way that you unlock the majority of them is by completing the target practice. There's three different levels of this. You basically just have to shoot a bunch of the blocks that are around and uh, if you don't have a short bow, you're going to struggle doing this. But if you do have a short bow, such as a Terminator, you're probably going to be fine. You're probably going to be chilling when it comes to shooting all of these. It's uh, definitely going to be annoying if you do it in a packed lobby. So you want to try and do the target practice in an empty lobby. But it's, uh, it's basically you do this to unlock the arrows in here. And some of them are really cool. So I'm going to go through the target practice right now and then I will talk about the arrows. All right, so I just finished uh, target practice three and now if we open Jax, he should have a bunch of cool arrows for me. Uh, I believe that these are all of the arrows, I'm pretty sure. Some of them are unlocked, like you can see this Nanzorb arrow. Uh, it's unlocked via the Cactus Collection as well. I don't have that, but some of these are very cool. I find the glue arrow to be pretty interesting because this one is basically freezing every single enemy that you hit for 1.5 seconds, which is really nice. Uh, the explosive arrow could be very interesting because it explodes for two seconds uh, or on impact and the explosion deals the arrow's damage split to mobs within 2.5 blocks. So if you're dealing with a boss, you get more damage pretty much for free as long as there's not enemies around them. Uh, just a bunch of these arrows are very interesting. I don't know which one is truly going to be the meta arrow but like the bouncy arrow for example is really good and now you have to grab an arrow swapper to choose which one you want to take priority in your quiver and uh, th these arrows are just going to be a new way to customize archer a little bit more because uh, it archer was definitely pretty weak when it came to customization you can't even put gemstones on a terminator but now you got some really unique arrows and you gotta buy them with a bit more expensive stuff than just uh, coins. It's not that bad because, I mean, look at this. Slime blocks, okay, who really cares? Enchanted cactus green, not too bad. But these are all the arrows that finally got added. Should make archers do a bit more damage as well because if you look at these, uh, they do, like, the flint arrow has damage plus one. 
but then something like the glue arrow has 15 damage on it. So that's pretty nice. That should be a nice increase. I don't think it'll be as big as like 15 times in your damage, but it will still be pretty good. And uh, that's pretty much all that is given from this community project. A couple other things that were changed with the update that might annoy some people. Infinite Quiver got a little bit of a nerf. It used to be going up to 100% chance to not use arrows when you had Infinite Quiver 10. It was pretty goaded. Now it goes up to 30%. Uh, yeah, <laughs> got a pretty big nerf. You only get 3% per level of Infinite Quiver. And they're doing this so that people have to buy more arrows and that people can't have these OP nuts like glue arrows for free. So I sort of understand it. It's definitely going to be annoying to fill up your quiver all the time, especially if you're a dungeons player. But I mean, what are you going to do? It's uh, you, you got a big buff with your arrow damage and just the new different kinds of arrows. So I can't really complain too much about infinite quiver getting changed. Another thing, this one's definitely going to annoy some people, especially the farmers of the world, because they fixed a bunch of the stacking things, such as the ferocity on, or vicious on wands. They fixed speed hose stacking in your inventory. And the worst thing that they did, they fixed farming for dummies being something that stacks. People would fill, 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 fill their inventories with hose just so that they could get a little bit more farming fortune and uh, now that's not a thing. So expect farming for dummies to drop in price on the auction house once again because uh, farming for dummies has gotten very expensive because of all the people who do buy it so that they can stack and now that's not a thing so uh, rip to the people who are grinding with just like 54 billion hoes in their inventory. Other than the community project, we actually did get an update on the PSA thread about the upcoming gemstone changes, and all these updates are even better. I already was pretty hyped for this, and uh, it's going to be even more cracked. For one, the default rarity of Divin's Drill is now remaining mythic. It was a bit scary to see Divin's Drill get pretty much nerfed like really hard because they're adding a topaz slot to 655, and they were lowering the rarity of Divin's Drill, so the Reforge stats were going to be the same on the two drills. But now it's remaining Mythic, and they're adding a new rarity above Mythic called Divine. And this rarity is actually going to have its own Reforge stats. It's not going to be like Supreme, where it's just uh, cosmetic. But Divine is going to be exclusive to items that are on the caliber of Divin's Drill. So it's going to be the best of the best of the best items in the game. The Divin's Drill is definitely one of the harder to get items that has ever existed in Skyblock. So adding a new rarity to it and other items that are going to release in the future of the same caliber, I'm hyped for that. I can't wait to see what color they go for with the rarity. Uh, leave your guess down below. My guess, they're going to go with a chroma color. It's just going to be rainbow. It's going to be epic. That's, that's a bad guess, but imagine... Uh, Divine's just going to be cool, it's going to be added as an AH filter, and they're not going to add any enchanted books that are divine. Next, they're adding chat toggles to pristine and compact. I'm down for that. I hate pristine fill in my chat, and I don't want to download a mod to fix it, so that's poggers. Uh, the jungle pickaxe is getting fixed. That just makes sense. Uh, I don't get why they had to put that in the patch notes there. It was assumed, hopefully, that it was going to get fixed at any point. Uh, they're increasing the odds of Divin's Alloy. Divin's Alloy is a, it's a very rare item, you know? So, increasing the odds of that is pretty nice. I wish that we got some numbers on it. I wish we knew how rare it was. But maybe the Nucleus is even more worth grinding right then. Uh, they're changing the Scatha's second perk to increase odds of finding regular chests instead. That is an amazing change. For you guys who don't have a Scatha, the Scatha Pet's second perk is absolutely awful. Right now, it is basically making it so when you're mining, you get a 3% chance to mine up a treasure burrow. And when I say treasure burrow, I mean you mine up like one mithril or one treasureite. And it's absolutely terrible. So making the Scatha the best pet for chest grinding and powder grinding, 
I support that. I completely support that. And they're changing the third perk to only work on adjacent hardstone instead of every block. So there was a thing where you could pretty much just mine gemstones by mining hardstone with the Skatha. I don't think anyone was really abusing it, but I get the change. It was definitely, uh, it probably ignored breaking power. It's a bit broken and uh, it insta broke the gemstones. So that's a perfectly reasonable change. And then they gave some extra details on the worm spawning buffs. Currently, it checks if players are in a small tunnel. It looks for a one by two or a two by two, I believe. And uh, now the requirements are getting up to be a larger tunnel. I wish, I wish that they would give us some numbers. As I just said, numbers would be amazing because larger tunnel isn't, uh, isn't that interesting. It's not that telling of what it is. So uh, that, that sort of sucks. But the next change is huge, guys. This next change is amazing for anyone who mines anything other than gemstones. Pristine and compact are now compatible on the same item. I don't get why it wasn't like this from the beginning. I don't get why it took them this long to change that. But now we can finally have compact, which means more mining XP, which means you can go and mine mithril without just being like wasting your time because you have pristine on there and you're not going to remove pristine to put compact on so that's a w that is a huge w in my books uh next they're buffing the stats of sapphire ruby and amethyst all of these uh crystals or gemstones just sort of sucked the slots were pretty wasted if you threw a sapphire on there. And uh, hopefully they make it a little bit more worth. Hopefully they make it at least a question on if you should run sapphire over something like Jasper. Uh, players that have too many Heart of the Mountain tokens, they're getting reset. That's nice because some people have like full Heart of the Mountain menus worth of things. So that's a bit scary. The Ruby and Jasper Crystals are also going to have a chance to drop from the Crystal Nucleus. For the Ruby Crystal, that doesn't really matter. The Ruby Crystal, for one, isn't needed much, and for another, is very, very common. You can get it just by mining Ruby. But the Jasper Crystal, that's a pretty nice buff, because the way to get that, I believe, is killing butterflies. And butterflies are pretty rare, because they only spawn in the Fairy Grotto, and that's pretty tough. And uh, yeah, that's just a nice change for people who are going to be making perfect Jasper in the future. Last but not least, they're changing this, the description of the jungle amulet and they're going to better explain what it does. If you guys haven't seen the jungle amulet talisman, it says increases the chance to find gemstones when mining by 10%. That makes no sense because uh, gemstones spawn in the same spot in every single lobby. So you're not like randomly finding gemstones. So no one knows what this actually is supposed to do. So fixing the description for that is going to be pretty pog. Overall, this update for the Crystal Hollows and the Community Project are both really awesome. There's definitely a bit of cons for the Community Project. The Infinite Quiver thing can be a bit annoying. And the fact that I have to go and grind Cactus Collection for that arrow is going to be pretty annoying. But uh, it's hype to have new arrows. It's hype to have new things from the shop when it comes to armor. And uh, the Crystal Hollows update, I already said that the stuff that they were doing to change everything was going to be great, and they just keep adding on more and more great stuff. So it seems like they're really going to polish out the Crystal Hollows and make it as good as it should have been on launch, and it's going to be awesome. So I can't wait to play more Crystal Hollows stuff. Can't wait to still grind gemstones because 30 mil an hour, I'll still grind for that. That's going to be awesome. But uh, that's going to be it for the video. I hope it in informed you. I hope it helped you out. And I will talk to you guys in the next video. Peace out.